Good evening. My name is Matt Lawless. I serve as the Scottsville Town Administrator, and you're now viewing the meeting stream and recording for the Town of Scottsville Planning Commission meeting held on Monday, August 1st, 2022. Thank you for joining us here. This meeting is open to the public at the Town Office, 401 Valley Street, and is held in compliance with Virginia Freedom of Information Act and the state's open meeting laws. The meeting agenda includes a public comment period, and there are several opportunities for the public to participate in person here at the office. You can also join online or by calling in. Um, the local time here now is 13 minutes until seven o'clock. That's the posted start time of our meeting. We're still setting up our room and gathering our quorum to come to order. So I'll mute this line now. If you'd like to skip ahead on your meeting recording by 13 minutes, you'll see it's come to order at seven. Thank you very much.
call this meeting to order. It's 7 2 p.m. Um, we have form. One of our members is online. Um, and no one may be joining us. So we do have form. Do we need a roll call? Yes, and I think it would be worthwhile. I already spoke with uh, the council member, but it'd be worth just as uh, maybe if it's possible for her to, uh, for public record, if she's wanting to vote or not, even though the agenda seems to not have any actions like that. Okay. And then it'd be cool. Okay. Um, Commissioner Angevine, we are wondering if you'd like to use your. Um, if your absence today would count if there were any votes or if you'd like to defer that option. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I am listening and will participate um, and I'm glad to vote. I don't know that we have anything to vote on, but. Right. What's, what is the rule again? One, one remote. Okay, so if you could state for us your uh, location, the reason for you're not being physically present, and if you want to be able to vote tonight or not. Okay. Um, this, is, this is Molly Angevine. I am uh, listening remotely from my residence up the hill. And um, I am listening, hoping to participate if necessary. And if there is a vote, I'd like to participate. Okay, thank you. Then they do a roll call. Briscoe? Uh, Here. Pantivana? Here. Uh, Johnson? Here. Strasser? Here. Uh, Angevine? Here. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Agenda? Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. Uh, number two, report on relevant actions by town council. I sent an email to it, so I'll get the email. If you get the email, I'll give you a. And are you getting our emails, the planning question emails? Yes. Yeah. So what this is about is I want to alert the planning commission to the opportunity that we have as the town to take a more robust approach at the planning commission looking at the trails for both the Van Cleef nature area and also what in the past I referred to as the Emerald Necklace. If you look at this document, it's actually one I created a number of years ago. Talking to the mayor, one of the things that we were chatting about is for a number of years I've headed up the Bank Creek Nature Area Committee on what we've done. And so I'd like to we'll be continuing to do that, but more in the planning commission capacity. So what I first of all want to do is invite each one of you as planning commissioners to say, let's as a town have a robust conversation about how do we think the designs for trails should go. The Nankweed Nature Area, the 63 acre park that's here, when we started 10 years ago, it had been dormant for many years since when it was first built in the 1970s as a retention pond uh, related to the Main Creek. Once we began at first, there was a committee that was formed and eventually a number of projects were done. The main thing was to get access from the town, which we didn't have at the time. We had the lawsuits, we had land donating, we traded property, we've done a whole lot of different things. But the main thing I would say would be if you 
again, looking at the map over there, looking at where we are, we kind of had three different phases. I would say the first phase was kind of a little bit of a misunderstanding of the Dantic nature. There were some people early on the first few years got involved, thinking that the park was kind of a landlocked park. As we then worked on a master plan and understanding the park and realizing it's the center of the town. So whenever you look at a map of this in Scottsdale, you'll see the Dantic nature is right in the center. And that's where really, I think some of the people earlier on in the committee were a bit confused or a bit didn't really understand the purpose of the park. But in terms of understanding it, how we understand it today is it's the center of the town of Scottsville. And as we develop, there's a number of different projects that are wished for, things we plan for in the pipeline. As a lot of you know, or maybe don't know, we're about to get a document that's uh, going to take place. That's something we've been working on for probably about eight years. Finally, the, our friends in the state came up with a plan for it. But there's a number of different things. We wanted to build a large trail that was up here called the Overlook Trail. There's also an area down here we've talked about doing something for former Mayor Grove. And there's also a number of development features in the park. So the main thing I wanted to say as the Planning Commission and also to the town is as we really more robustly go after developing a trail network for the Emerald Necklace of Scottsdale, it means connecting trails, not just from the Bank Creek Nature area, but also to other parts of town. As we think of the development that's happening on Burr Street and how important it is with trails down there, or things we're talking about um, up with our new gas station, there's a lot of things that we want to think of the interconnectedness of these. As, again, going back to talking to the mayor, these are things that, uh, in my capacity as a town council, I was very involved in, haven't been quite as busy the last couple of years, but thinking it's important to kind of get, get it before you all start to both, you might say, dream a little bit, plan, and then figure out as we're dialoguing with various entities, how do we want them to interconnect? Even the most recent dialogue that we've had with Tiger Fuels would be better understood as we understand the bigger context of how do we want to develop trails. We've talked about doing things also from uptown to downtown. We've talked about how we connect to Toby Creek. There's plans that go all the way back to 2003 that the Thomas Jefferson Planning Commission had, which really have been a nucleus for my own ideas to follow up on what they did. So this is for just to say, hey, Planning Commission, let's bring these old ideas in front of you and let's bring with the new excitement. Also inviting uh, members of the community out there to think, how can we do these things together? When we had the um, ECR, lady who gave us the $85,000 grant to build the connection that you see today when she was here. She walked with me looking at all the things we did a number of years ago. She got me a headache about all the things we could do in a good way. In other words, thinking about, you need to get this grant, you need to raise this money, you need to build this trail, you need to build this bathroom, you need to do all these different things that we need to do. So these are things that we as a town would want to do and want to develop. And as we also brought trail experts here over the years, they've seen that the trail similar to the Monticello walking trail that was built back here, which can easily be done if we have the funding. And we were close to getting a grant in 2016 for it, other than some local people uh, blocking us inadvertently. Um, all that to say, the opportunities are really endless here for us to open up a new vista and so I, this is, these are some old documents and I look forward to talking more with you about it, but I think it's key to think not only where we have been, but where we're going. I would say that we're kind of like a football game or like midway through the second quarter in terms of developing this infrastructure here and really look forward to chatting with y'all more about it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I don't think that we have this in mind in the past year or two when we were having conversations about site developments and new projects in town. So it is, it's nice to have a reminder that we, we want a town that's connectable and, and that it needs to be at the forefront of our minds. So thanks for reminding us about this. And You're welcome. I definitely think we should be that makes the time looking at it more. Um, does this have 
also have you talked before about connecting a trail to uptown would that be part of this system in your mind absolutely yeah okay. one of the things that if you think of what they've done for example in atlanta with the bell line or new york city with the high line these trails have in urban areas they've connected communities in a way where they have trails that are not on the roads mm -hmm. and one of the ideas in terms of connecting uptown and downtown we looked at years ago uh, through i guess at the time it was the was it the planning commission, the planning commission. yeah mm -hmm. looked at the, the sidewalk and i think we all know that we build a sidewalk even if we have the funding it still would be really skinny so the concept of creating a connection whether it's right away with some property owners or people buying you know, buying land working with people there's several different routes that, that could be done in the end creating a walkable community really is the future it's, it's being done everywhere and the echo friendliness of being able to get around and enjoy this area it also helps us think creatively about how do we want future development to happen or as we influence the other side you know if we didn't opt for construction this time around but um, sometime in the future there will be development um, got willing on the other side of the nature area so we want to think about how would that interconnectivity, interconnectivity work with trails what type of trails would they be and so there's there's a lot of opportunities people already knew some of the trails too for different things and even scan it was funny early on when we first started we were way ahead of scan for a number of years now with all that say they're ahead of us so it's neat to see what they've done recently but we really are trying to work together. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else from the Tech Council? I mean, is there anything else you want to add to anything that you saw? I thought that was interesting. Um, looking back through my notes, See anything that comes to mind in the implementation of the so. We'll try to bring the excitement to others. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have a meeting at once in a while where we don't have a lot of excitement, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, matters from the public. <laughs> uh, I just want to point out to the the uh, bad feet and also the small air that probably should be updated with the uh, when you update the comprehensive plan. So that could all be done together, you know, so you don't have to do it separately, you know, so you look at everything together, you know, as, as I was part of the uh, updates of those when we did those about five years ago. So those should all be updated. Yes. But uh, what I want to mention is about the, uh, the, uh, the, the pod that's being developed in uh, and I'm not sure if it's for uh, the plant or Blenheim. And I think it could be beneficial to one of the both areas. But I, I do have some concerns about it. Um, uh, you know, and I, I did study a lot of, or look, research a lot of the, uh, on the plants for that and, and what they were. Uh, you know, the one we have, I think, is, is, is a good start, but I think it needs a, a, lot, uh, a lot more uh, kind of. Structure to it, I think. Um, but what I see as a pod is, for the most part, uh, is it's a, uh, it's like what I read is it's like little small city, or little small town. And a lot of the ones I looked at are Arlington and Fredericksburg. It would be good, I don't know if you looked at the towns, little towns that had huts, because I think around here, that would be a, a little different than say like in Arlington or Fredericksburg, because uh, you know they're they're pretty open ended and they need all kinds of things. But I think uh, my concern with the PUD is that um, I think what I like to see is civic uses there, like maybe some residential and civic uses, like uh, a daycare, a uh, a medical facility, something that would benefit the community. I don't think we need. Uh, I mean, if we have residences and and commercial. I don't think for the residences there they would want. Um, to have a, a brewery there, a coffee shop there, a bakery there, just like we have it. And, and people would move in there because I just don't think we have two commercial areas and I think we should build those first. So I think the pun could be good, but I think it should be 
primarily specified for uh, some civic use. That just like when we when we had the uh, for years people wanted a car wash, we finally got a car wash. But for years people wanted medical, dental, daycare, those kind of things, um, and that could be a part of the project. So what I'm saying is, I think uh, I think the develop or, or what the developers need guidance and structure and uh, and uh, kind of told what can go there and what could be special use, like a special use like a gas station or, or whatever, or, or a retail store. But I, I, I do feel like that, that that has to be uh, you know, specified. What's what the fly right and what's, uh, what could be by special use? That's my question. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, Yeah, so, so uh, I, I guess I could, I'd like to see you know examples of ones that are in there, but, uh, the urban or not urban or suburban, but in a small town, you know, small town under five thousand. I know I know there's ordinances for those, but the actual you know implementation of a HUD in a small town, I, it'd be good to see what other towns have done. But I just don't think HUD would work real well unless it's really directed and specified what can be there and what cannot be there. But I think just, I just feel like our the one that's grabbed by South really kind of loose and open ended. And uh, I do think that, uh, you know, it, it, could, it could have consequences, you know, if you, if you open up to having, you know, we don't, we have finite kind of land. And if you open it up to having uh, retail or kind of commercial things, a lot of people would be out of the town or the shopping center to those kind of places. And that, you know, that's after that area, after that. So, anyway, that's. Hi, folks. How's everybody doing today? I'm Sarah Woods of the one on the road. Um, what I'm going to kind of mention some of the information has been discussed before, but I had a chance to read over um, the latest draft of the PUD, and I just wanted to kind of bring things up that are. Um, worth taking a look at, in my opinion. Um, the draft is, like it, like it said, a draft that's a good starting point. And as Bill stated, I think that there are a lot of areas that Scottsville can really focus in on. Um, the interesting thing, and, and Matt and I have discussed this before, the interesting thing about PUDs is if they're too lenient, they get taken advantage of. And we've recently all been through a process where we've heard where the minimum standards, the very bare minimums have been met. Um, even though our ordinances make a request, bare minimum is what's followed. Um, there are also cuts that are so strict that they never get used. And they're just a, you run this fine line of creating something that's going to be useful to the community for a longer term without becoming defunct almost immediately. Um, so definitely, again, I will say, I think it would be very beneficial to wait until the comprehensive plan is updated if that is a plan coming. That is the plan that um, is really used to show what the community's interest is. Like Bill was saying, whether or not community has more interest in civic or businesses in certain locations, um, that comprehensive plan is, is the backbone to any planned unit development ordinance. Um, and I believe uh, you all may have received some other um, examples of planned unit development ordinances from local communities. If not, um, I'm happy to, to give the copies that I printed out. But um, some of the things that I noticed um, along uh, reading through the examples versus the Scottsville PUD. The Scottsville PUD doesn't carry any minimum land size requirement. Most of the other examples uh, carry between three, five to 20 acres as minimum requirements on a space. Um, and Scottsville leaves it open. So, you know, there is that question of whether or not uh, places will be divided in individual teeny tiny little PUDs. Um, will an area be used effectively the way that it was intended by creating this ordinance in the first place? And I think one of the reasons that a lot of the community members have discussed bringing this 
into existence is to make sure large tracts of land are cohesive when they're developed. So I would encourage um, the draft to include a minimum requirement on land usage. Um, and I will say that Lexington and Abington both, I believe, have minimum land requirements that they share. Um, Pulaski does as well. Um, Scottsdale's draft doesn't include density bonuses. That's something that I know I talked about previously. Um, Abington in particular is one to take a look at. Um, they offer density bonuses, for example, for every 5% additional of open land, another dwelling unit could be built. Um, for every low income housing that is built, there's a one for one on uh, density increase um, for a planned human development. Those sorts of things are really beneficial because the planned unit development and clustering in general is to help protect open land, especially in rural areas like Scottsville. You want to protect as much of the open land as possible. The best way to protect that land and still get the density is by going to clustering and getting density bonuses where more of the land is open to the public and they still get that extra house is really beneficial to, to look at. So I would highly encourage um, density bonuses. And as I said, um, Abington has a really great example of that. Um, Scottsville's draft only calls for 20%, 25% uh, of the overall land less as open space, which I find very interesting, saying as our current village residential special use permit requires 33% to be left in open space if they use the cluster development density, which is what was used for BIRD. Um, I don't think the plan development, unit development um, ordinance should go backwards in that requirement. Um, and whether that 25% is also including a build-in of additional density units for additional um, <clears throat> open land spaces, um, I'm not sure. But I would encourage um, the planning commissioners to take a look at that and um, add that into the draft. Um, especially because right now, that means that if a special use permit comes up, they would be required to provide more open space than a larger planned unit development um, area, which doesn't really seem fair. And it's already something that's currently existing in Scottsville's ordinances. So use that as a base. Um, let's see. Um, there aren't any maximums uh, for the density of the development either. And I didn't see, and maybe I, I can be um, shown that, but I didn't see where the gross um, density is, um, how that's calculated. Um, a lot of the other Pangina developments, now whether or not they are too strict or not, that's open for debate, but a lot of the other um, places not only give the minimum amount, but they give the maximum amount of um, units per acre. So I think it would be worth Scottsville as well to take a look at that aspect too and how to create something that's not going to be used to the bare minimum every single time, but has um, a cap. So you also don't get taken advantage of in the, the opposite direction. Um, I don't think there's been any talk specifically other than right now we do know um, that the factory site is one of the places that's going to be looked at for planned unit development um, area. If this is something that's going to be open to the Blenheim track, right now the, the whole Blenheim acreage is between village residential and rural. Um, a lot of the uh, example planned unit uh, development ordinances that were given specify what can be used within those areas. And from what I have read, basically it means that you can use one or two above what is currently available to that area for density um, or adding one. Scottsville's, it's kind of open. It's whatever zoning is allowed. So the question becomes where it's currently rural, if a planned unit development, if that becomes a part of the planned unit development area, do you want to change that to industrial without having all of the uh, questions or, or light industrial without having all of those blanks filled in about VDOT, about roads, going through the issues with traffic that we had just even discussing the other developments. So I, I highly encourage um, some thought be put into that aspect about usages. Um, right now, Abington has uh, that Lexington 
actually all of them provide examples on who might usage um, and what districts and what items can be used. Comparing ours to one of the others, for instance, everything that would be able to be used in a special use permit would be automatically allowable under the planned unit development option without having to go through the plan, uh, without having to go through a special use permit. So that's something to definitely um, take a look at. Um, I'm sure there are more in my notes that I am missing, but I definitely um, would encourage um, that this still be a draft. Taking it slow is not a bad thing. Um, if you haven't read, read yet um, Politics for People, it's a really great book. Um, and it talks a lot about the fact that there is a lot of disconnect between things like public hearings versus public forums. You all had asked a lot about trying to get together with more people and some of the information used for this draft is already five years old. And if you all are familiar with Thomas Jefferson, like I have to be due to work, um, you know that Thomas Jefferson believed that a generation was every 20 years and that the constitution should be rewritten every 20 years. Well, we're a quarter of the way through that 20 year period if we're using information from 2018 in a draft that was originally started in 2015. Um, it's worth taking a look at, spending a little bit more time getting the public involvement, not just in public hearings, but actually doing it through um, public forums where there's more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation and more openness. Um, again, I'm going to tell this book one more time. It's really great because it advocates going slowly. You'll get more public buy-in, and the more public buy-in you have, the easier the whole process becomes. Going slow means smooth, and smooth is fast. So that's the one thing to, to keep in mind. Along with the, the trails, it's um, also worth bringing up that the trails are a really great idea. Um, and just kind of using that as an example, it's a great idea. And it also reminds us what recently happened with the bare minimums um, for sidewalks and things like that, recent conversations. So that's why I highlight having the minimums, the maximums. You don't want to make it too strict, but you also don't want to leave it so open-ended that Scottsville becomes the, the next place to take advantage of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to talk about the uh, comprehensive plan and small area plan. Um, just to give you an example, third, we've adjusted quite a bit what we've done to take the section in that area. Made it into public space, taking another section and made it into residential space. The original small area plan was to work with that whole property as an entity, and now it's been kind of pieced out. So you're being asked to make a PUD really based on the expectations of that small area plan. That small area plan expectation is for a whole property. And so I think it would take, it would probably be wise to take a look at that small area plan and update it. Because we no longer have that option about the whole big plan that we're talking about. Now that we've done some drilling and we know about the environmental uh, tests, we can no longer build up on that factory. So originally, we were part of the plan and the idea was that we were going to go up and make apartments and do all sorts of stuff, but we can't do that anymore. There's a building foundation or the stability because we have water between 8 feet and 12 feet. It can't happen. Ironically, if you wanted a medical center, you needed to pin up where we're put in bird. That would have probably been the only place we could have stabilized the building that goes that high. So that changes what the small area plan originally was intended for. It changes what we originally intended for that tire factory. Yet we're going to create a product based on the old expectations. The old expectations now that we've done some testing can't happen. So I really think we need to take a look at that small area plan instead of quoting it, going back to it. It's a smaller, small area. We have more limitations on it. And the same thing with the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan was developed some time ago. We pulled a number out, and I think it was you, Lisa, at the last meeting, did some calculations and figured, you know, we're pretty close to being on, on market. We're not unbelievably behind like it was kind of put out there. So I think the comprehensive plan has to be taken a look at too and adjusted because now, again, we can't build like we want to. Bird Street. We have to really decide what are we going to do with those old areas and really change village residential up the bird. I mean, up the land. 
So I think the planning board might, might benefit to be able to understand the flood better, to understand where it's going to be applied. And we, we're changing those plans, those expectations have changed. And a perfect example is when we got into uh, thinking about bird itself, we were talking about low income, we were talking about not low income, we were talking about affordable houses. And then engineers put out numbers of 300,000, 250, 300, maybe even 350, but not a single one of them had any plans or development plans for that property. And then when we finally got the developers here, when they finally bought the property, no, we haven't built anything at the price range for years. And now we're talking like four or five hundred. So we had an expectation. We pushed the project forward with this expectation of well, there will be houses that I can afford. Well, I can't afford five hundred. But that was thrown in at the last minute. So I think we need to go back to that comprehensive plan and revisit that small area plan to see what's applying now. Sarah hit on it a little bit. We're, we're working with old data. Everything has changed. And I, I think that should be done first. I think by just approving a very vague, loose HUD ordinance, we don't have HUD ordinance, we don't need a HUD ordinance. You can still do special use, you can still get variants, you can still build by right. It doesn't stop anything. But right now, the way it's written, uh, I could take one and do six acres, which was proposed, and not be able to do a comprehensive plan. And I could do another six acres. I'm exactly, but I could do another six acres. This is the very thing we complained about at one. But there's nothing in this part about I want a comprehensive plan for the whole property. Because we can declare this little piece of property, we don't have to provide. Sarah mentioned that it could be used as a worker. Right? So I think we're putting the card ahead of the horse, so to speak, right now. We don't need to plug, we don't need to add that to our ordinance. We certainly don't need it. The way the draft is but very, very loose, vague. I know it was said it was to allow it to be creative. Well, we've already seen a little bit of our creative stuff. If we've done the environmental, you're just an ass, aren't you? What's that? You're just an ass, aren't you? Mr. Holt, please. Why? Wow. He's just laughing. Simple. He's laughing. <laughs> That's not being civil. I don't know what you're laughing about. We're going to have public comments. Shouldn't be calling names. Um, any other comments from the public? Um, new business. The subdivision plat review for Bird Street. Sure. <laughs> Um, the setup is most basically the sidewalk to the some plants. I'm walking to the French. Introduce the topic here a little bit. Um, we're um, continuing the development uh, work at Bird Street. This is building on town council's um, approved special use permit from back in March. Some more engineering work has continued since then. Um, so the um, applicant team is ready to show a little bit further level of engineering detail. What the subdivision accomplishes is turning the one large parcel that is rezoned into the 36 house lots that were approved and we'll check on compliance with all of our zoning conditions. Um, Planning Commission hasn't looked at this in detail since Town Council approved it. So if, um, if you've not followed the Town Council work closely, you'll see a couple of things that evolved from the time Planning Commission recommended out to what town council finally approved. There's no action necessary for this evening. This is just the first reading to get comfortable with both the content of these plans and planning commission's role in inspecting them. So we can walk through our ordinance together. This, it's, a, it's a special day because it's the first time that Scottsdale Planning Commission has worked on a subdivision project of this scale under the ordinance that we have now. So we all need some time to get familiar with the views that we've got. Um, I appreciate Planning Commission um, requesting and Town Council approving funding for some consultant help on this because it's my first time working these ordinances as well. So I'm happy to yield some of the technical review to Ms. Maxie Brown from Berkeley Group. She's done this for many years with Culpepper and other localities. And she brings us some extra free help. Great, thank you. I'll let you thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Rick Gagan, members of the Commission uh, of Pritzko, and his Kelsey Schlein, a designer of structural engineering. We've been working on this preliminary subdivision plan. My sister, Southern Development, is here as well. Um, so, yeah, as Matt said, this is kind of um, you know, the, the culmination of uh, a good bit of work over the past few years where we're moving forward now. We're in the process of submitting um, our subdivision plat. And so this is the preliminary subdivision plat. We'll also have to go through a final subdivision plat as well. Um, but here in submitting this document to you all, we are looking at um, submitting a document that is consistent with the requirements in uh, chapter 68, section 302 of the town code. Um, so the subdivision ordinance and going through all of the items that are required for that. And so, um, as Matt said, this is kind of just a first check. We submitted it. And so uh, the town has 10 days, I guess, to accept our plan for review. And then um, at the September meeting, I think we're hoping to have any comments that uh, might come about from Ms. Brown for review or Matt um, for review with consistency with the ordinance. And um, then kind of taking those comments and incorporating that into a final plot. And so this is. I don't know how can I mention the details you guys want me to, to go, but if you have your plans in front of you, um, sheet, you know, C1, just cover page, including the information about, you know, plan prepare, owner, zoning, all that. Go ahead. Is this an extra copy? Yes. Yeah. I just want um, yeah, so she, C2, just looking at our existing conditions of the property, um, we do have a, a boundary and um, physical survey completed on the property now, so we're looking at survey property boundaries with easement information, um, and so she, three, you're kind of getting the full proposal of uh, a bit more detail um, than we had at the conceptual rezoning phase, um, showing the 36 lots, um, temporary turnarounds with accurate dimensions for roadways. Um, our kind of we have drainage area shown on here, our trail system as well, and floodplain, etc. Um, and then on sheet. C4, you get a little more information about stormwater management facilities, grading, utilities, all at kind of a little bit of a higher level, kind of similar to the site plan process. We'll be making our very detailed stormwater management plan submission to Admiral County as the BSMP reviewing authority. Um, so we have that shown kind of high level on here, but all the details of the drainage calculations and pond sizing and compliance with um, state stormwater code, that will all be submitted to Admiral County for review by their engineering department. Um, VDOT will also be weighing in on this as well, um, since these roads are proposed as uh, public subdivision streets. And so VDOT will be reviewing that for compliance with their regulations and their subdivision street guidelines uh, as well. I'm happy to yeah, keep oh, so, yeah. I'm a service story we're also looking at for capacity um, for both water and sewer as well. So I say it's, it's exciting to see, it's fun to see like y'all bringing this together and having this opportunity to see this come to fruition. And it's just a really good thing. So there's a, there's a set of partner input that we'll receive from EDOT and the service authority call. You can help us with um, notification, delivering copies to all of them, and then the schedule for them to deliver the comments to us. Yeah, certainly. Um, I'm happy to kind of be as involved as, you know, you, you like maybe I'll copy you on correspondence, but we'll get it out. We'll drop three copies off with ACSA, say you know, like that, and um, get our plans out digitally to be that as well. I know there's a, there's a more routine practice in Admiral and Fluvanna County, where there's a higher level of building activity. So you, you know where to go and where to get those two. So I'll appreciate you. Yeah. Definitely. What do we need to do from the town council perspective to kind of keep more coming to it because you guys are involved in this? Um, the town council, well, the planning commission in the code is kind of named as like the, as the planner viewing right. authority. So um, I know it's here, but is there anything else we can do? I, mean, I know it's already been through. So it's, it's, just, it's just great to see that. 
Yeah. 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 You know, pick up to the plan reviews. It's helpful to have um, additional parties just asking questions about review status. Right. But, other, other but that's a that's a good a good point, Mr. Gritsko, that um, the the town council decision on this project was back at the special use permit stage. The zoning is set, and so what we have here now is more of a, a shared technical review, like we did with the Tiger Field site, where we have to look and make sure that our zoning is being followed. But there's not another policy decision that, to make. Um, we're working together to scrutinize these plans and make sure everything that council said they wanted is there. And then we get input from the water authority, VDOT, and so on to make sure that it's engineered safely. So I, I can't be the judge of whether the water pipe is the right size or whether the sidewalk is the right thickness. So they'll help us with that. Can you walk us through some of the key points of those special use permit topics? I think you, you heard at that zoning stage what the most important you know, community elements of that was. So um, yeah. show us the, the highlights there. Mm -hmm. that be nice. Certainly, yeah. So I mean, just kind of going through, I guess I'll just run, run down the conditions. And the concept matching this, this plan is very well, nearly identical to the plan that was presented as the concept plan for rezoning. Um, there's, uh, you know, we have a, an additional detail for a turnaround shown on, on Bird Street that that would, you know, be a fire and, and rescue the VDOT requirement regardless. That wasn't shown on the concept, but, you know, some just very minor kind of details that are typically aren't shown at the conceptual level of a rezoning design, but, but are then included when we get into our much more detailed plans. Um, we have our, you know, the max density, uh, there's maximum of 36 lots shown on here. Um, so that's consistent. Um, we have a, a mixture of unit type shown. I think it's the exact same breakdown um, that was presented at the rezoning with a maximum of we have six um, duplex units shown and 30 single family uh, lots shown. Um, the, we had some uh, setback requirements. Um, just about having some additional space between the lots, um, increasing the minimum lot size from what was required in the ordinance um, by right. And so that's all compliance with those are shown on there, but I, that's kind of one element that's- um, just, a, just a question yeah. about the duplexes. So is this pretty set where they will be like this particular spot in the design? Um, well, as far as, and, and actually I should have, um, I guess just a question about lots, whether or not we are showing this on one lot or two lots, that would be something to work uh, we'd probably show on two, two lots. lots. Yeah. So, so that is one of the things, one of the things mentioned by one of our town residents was we were trying as the town council to have some ability to deal with the cost issue of the housing. And this one is kind of our compromise. No, you know, no issue is perfect, but trying to add an element in there. So I was just more, so you think this is where they'll be in terms of this? And I think in general, uh, after looking at conceptual grading plans, they kind of want to be somewhere in a flatter area of the site. You can stop the buildings. Right. Um, but yes, that would add a variety of uh, house pr pricing with a 20 foot product. The other concept you really don't see here um, because the fine rate is not established yet but there's going to be um, different uh, foundation types. So for instance, out on Bird Street, what you're going to visualize there is you'll have probably three stories out of grade with two in the back here. And, and then as you work your way up into the site, there'll be a crawl space scenario. And then um, depending on how this grade in the middle works to the upper road, um, possible a traditional walkout style basement. So as basements to crawl spaces, uh, you're going to see a fluctuation in pricing um, with that as well. So it's trying to promote, put, promote and as much variety of housing options within that small. Can, can you walk me through a little bit just on, just on number four? One of the things that town residents expressed concern is was just the drainage. And so how do you see the, the sort of flow of the water coming off the site, this, the detention system? And 
then is there like what is it based off of in terms of quantity of rent capital like this? Is it, you know, what's is it how much value comes down at one time? Is it, is it, yes. So when the engineers Kelsey's team goes more in depth with the um, WPO plan, the water protection plan, they're looking at um, the release rate from the site, the post um, development has to be at or below the pre development of the site. So they're looking at different um, runoff scenarios. Sure. Um, one scenario, and we haven't flushed this out, was to look at possibly using the existing pond for some volume. That's what um, I was wondering. By adjusting the riser in that pond, the structure, um, since it's right there, uh, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. But uh, of course, um, with the new regs, we have to also um, address water quality as well. So is that, do you see that as a fact? I mean, it was said many times by many people in the town just about our concern for the James River. For sure. And the river. And yep. I was uh, more thinking about it from where we are now, just kind of understanding, okay, how's the flow of the water actually going to go to us? And then having just had a lot of code washers recently makes you understand the value of mm -hmm. not, not just in terms of the runoff itself, but how does that play out in terms of the development area? Does it create any congestion in terms of where the flow of water it is, or are the drains you know, the right place, so to speak? That's actually something too that's critical is, is understanding, you know, getting a break in the right place personally. Sure. Um, and then as they go in depth with that uh, more technical engineering plan that will go to um, Frank Cole and his team and Elmer, they'll have to show drainage areas for every rooftop and everything in which where that drainage area is going and calculate the velocity of that water and establish that they meet the technical side of that and can adequately put that water in a different location. Great, thank you. Yeah, we evaluate that with every channel that the water falls into. So that's a key component of the plan. But I beg your pardon, does that, does that happen at this stage or final when we see the county engineer's note saying this appears to comply with county stormwater ordinance? It's an important question. She actually can. She actually receive a copy of the documents, both for review and the approved stamp for the town's records. So you should give them a final one. That's fine, not necessarily. So, so it's my understanding, traditionally going through the process of different municipalities, with a preliminary, you get a preliminary, and then you get a preliminary with a conditional approval with VDOT mm -hmm. engineering, uh, service authority, and those are all based that you have to have those approvals prior to the final being signed off, right? So. We're, we're approving it, and it, it's preliminary because it looks like it's on the right track, but we need to check the arithmetic of those drainage ditches and make sure they're correct. And that they is, do what we think they do, but we can say that it's on the right track. Correct. That's true of the big firm. And, and I, I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I think this is the most important thing this town has done about the last 20 years. So thank you for your diligence, both in making it happen and also just excited that it's actually it's happening. We're excited for that. Thank you. Can I ask, um, what do you think the price point of the homes, like a mix of costs, will be? I would probably give you a number that's not going to be correct. Right. right. Um, truthfully, so today's uh, August 1st. Mm -hmm. By the time we get through all the final engineering, move dirt, set the pads, put in the roads, put in the infrastructure, vertical construction. If we're lucky, we're there in 18 months, but it's probably been more like 24 months. So now I'm trying to project what the material cost is and two years off. I can't predict what material cost is next week. Um, it's just like, it's been an up and down uh, the insanity of it the last year and a half. So 
our goal is to try to build a smaller single family home um, and try to get it at the right price point because obviously we needed to sell right. or we have a whole lot of money on the ground. So that's our goal is to, I, I don't know what the number is, but the opportunity to provide a variety of housing types, mm -hmm. like I suggest with the foundations and having some of the smaller units is right. to try to get that variety of price point within the neighborhood instead of just having a price point 350 and it's the same house all the way across. Right. So that's not the goal here. Oh, sorry, I can't really give you a final point number. Um, <clears throat> the, the last time I ran down this street, I noticed that it wasn't up, up, to, up to spec feet up street, and there's the end state maintenance sign back here at the beginning of the project area. What is this? How's the street profile going to change in this drawing? What, what work is being done on the Bird Street to make it different from the way it is now? Yes, uh, I mean, the, the main thing to get it up to be dot standards is going to be the width. Um, so currently, as it's designed, it's, it's not wide enough to meet be that subdivision standard. So that's going to be kind of going to be the biggest um, change. The grade isn't, you know, too crazy in that area. Um, so that's going to be a big thing. And then, of course, also just getting the right pavement down um, mm -hmm. as well. I mean, that pavement that's there right now is not be that standard is that either, either. And so I think that's, you know, contributes a lot to the um, to the state of that road. It's just that the the subgrade and um, mm -hmm. the pavement finish is, is not to be dot standards either. So all of that will, will be done to be dot spec. Okay. But just on this project area, it's your parcel. So across from Ms. Martin's home here, the street doesn't change. You begin your work at your property line. Uh, right. co correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, wherever the, wherever the end seat it exactly is, then that's kind of where okay. we need to pick up on it. So you have to widen the sidewalk just in front of your development. VDOT doesn't require that you widen the sidewalk any further? Not, um, no, not unless, uh, it, it's, it's really just gonna depend on the, the end state maintenance sign is kind of the, mm -hmm. the, the big consideration here for where the street has to be improved to be outside. It's, 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 I think it's about where that, where these trees start. Um, we have a, SGP condition about um, designing a sidewalk connection and, and delivering a plan set that's ready for funding application to be got. Um, we have an active project in town on um, the block of, of Bird between Harrison and Page with um, crosswalk improvements at these two intersections. Um, and I would expect to follow that with another VDOT uh, sidewalk building grant application to fully connect the distance across the library. Morris and Martin um, properties. So if the, um, when the applicant delivers that plan set, that's something that we can use in our application um, to make like a phase two after um, the Harrison to page segment is done. So that's, that's how that gets connected. But um, VDOT doesn't automatically improve their streets just because someone in the private sector is doing it. And the private developer doesn't have to improve VDOT making roads. What's on the um, page four? What are the little boxes on the house? So those doorways, are they, is that a porch? So in the front, uh, I think they're just picking up on porches. Uh, and then the rear, um, so typically what we do when we go to site a house, when we go into the first engineering stage, we try to, so we have a, a handful of 30 foot wide products. What we like to try to do is take the deepest one and site that on all the lots we can, because then it's easier to work in than it is to work out. Mm -hmm. So that represents a uh, rear porch, and that also was just a bump out of my room that was um, in the design on that typical house. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, on the duplex, you're looking at rear decks with uh, porches to the front mm -hmm. as well. 
and that, that dotted line shows the buildable area within the setback. So That's correct. The that, that references the actual um, setback line, mm -hmm. the line in a little circle. And then the other uh, component of this is that uh, with the building code, the way it is now in Elmore County, it's requiring to show uh, the roof overhangs. So Kelsey's team is um, showing one foot outside that wall that would pick up as your eave to the house as well. Because they're looking at that for um, fire code if you're within five feet or so to a property line and distances and stuff. And we, we allow the front porches to um, thrust further forward beyond this line. But if, if somebody bought this and wanted their house pushed all the way back into the corner, they, they could do that too. We don't, I don't think we require it to be flushed to the front. Um, I don't think so. Um, but typically we try to pull them to the front because mainly people want that bigger backyard. Um, just okay. space to use. Okay. But you might end up with a uh, very, very uh, variation. Very, very okay. small because I think it's important to keep that streetscape. We wouldn't want to have a house 10 feet, 15 feet back, and the next one up here. Okay. It just doesn't look right. So. I, I know also you're just showing pictures here, but one of the requests of people in town were either you know native plants or yeah. So I think that's a pretty simple definition, right? That's kind of what you're planning to do. Yes. Elmore County has a list. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, that's the list that helps us. I mean, I might prefer it instead of Bush here or there, but that's not a that's not thing in my face. But yeah, I recognize that, you know, that I think it's well intended in terms of that idea. So that'll be more that it later. Yeah, so there's two different landscape things. Uh, uh, packages going on here. This, this, what you see here is referred to as the site plan landscaping. And then as the home building comes in, they'll have their own foundation. Um, typically it's a tree or two in the yard as well. So there's additional landscaping that comes with the home as well. So now this may just be because this is like the first um, plan that we're seeing, but like with the houses, it's like there's a stamp and a stamp and a stamp and a stamp. They all look the same when um, some degree of architectural variability was, if not encouraged, then soon. Correct. Um, can you speak to that? Yeah. So I go back to what I, I said earlier. What we try to do is take our largest of the of whatever product we site. We have like a 30 foot product, or a 40 foot product. We always take the deepest. So this so that's uh, is the amber wood, for example. So we'll site the amber wood on everything. That way we know we grade this out. Um, a meridian is a very popular, um, which is probably eight feet shorter from the rear. Okay. So we know at that point we have no issues with easements or so that's setbacks. just a placeholder. Make exactly. Sure that and then we go from there and grade forward. So okay. at what point would we see the proposed variation? So when we go to home sales, um, we vary we try to vary between elevations. And then we also look at color too, because we don't want to have same house color all next to each other as well. So we try to. I thought about this this morning, that if, if somebody were shopping for one of these and they said, okay, I want a blue amber wood, you might be in the position of saying, I'm sorry, the person on your left already got one of those. And we get into that quite often. We need a brown ridge. <laughs> we get into that. But we, uh, so what we've developed is, three to four different elevations of the same home. Yeah. So there's one that's a little bit more modern. There's one more traditional, um, some different roof and uh, eaves and stuff on the home. So we try to tackle it that way. Um, we're building a software right now and that's something we're working through. Um, and it's it's working out because our sales team does it every work we build. So they have to understand repetitive is not the answer. And a lot of times you move them to a different lot if that scenario comes up. Yeah, so yeah. 17 is not point. Exactly. Can you remind me what defines a class B trail versus other options? Oh, it says class B. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, so the class B is a uh, specific reference to the Elmore County Design Standards Manual. So it's a very like specific trail type okay. that they have. 
Is that between the take two and take one? But I think it's the. I want to say that the five five gravel or dust or, or mulch. mulch. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Not paved surface, but yes, a natural surface. And there's the HOA will will maintenance the trails. Is that right? Has, who will? Yeah. That was a that was a condition for public easement and dedication. Okay, I believe so. The construct the initial construction will be on the on the home builder and mm -hmm. developer. Okay, with a dedication mm -hmm. then to the town. Yes, we'll, so the we'll town be, will maintenance the trails. Yes, that was where we went on that. Um, that there will be public access through this site and that um mulch material or any future upgrades to it will be on the town okay okay and that was town council that that voted for that right yes but the um we, we didn't they right. added that okay. yes but uh council felt it was important that there be public access through all of this um so the HOA's big responsibility is the stormwater system. That's correct. Right. Those, those need generational maintenance and routine maintenance. Yeah. yeah. So the that. HOA is uh, will be privately, and unfortunately, I sit on these boards until we finally like have mass uh, home ownership in there, and then we turn it over to homeowners. But we hire a professional firm that runs it for them to do all the high level and uh, hiring of any maintenance requirements, but Elmo County requires us to sign a stormwater management agreement that gets recorded at the clerk's office that de de defines what um, the requirements are for this community and what they need to do um, regarding those facilities. And they're checked by the county to send out um, individuals every once in a while just to see if the maintenance is being kept up. Talking about maintenance and upkeep of these public areas, specifically the trail. Um, what, in your experience, is the general sort of ballpark maintenance cost commitment for um, a natural trail versus a paved uh, trail? And why did you choose to do mulch or gravel as opposed to paved? You might have more experience. Sure. Um, than I do, yeah. Um, we typically build that style of trail in most of our communities. Um, it's more of a pedestrian experience than it is walking on pavement through a wooded area. It just doesn't kind of go together, in my opinion. Um, as far as maintenance, built correctly, there isn't a whole lot. Once in a while, you get a wash out here and there in some areas, but um, done correctly, you figure it out that this is where it washes out every time, and then you add a pipe and divert water. From those areas. Um, ultimately, I don't know, uh, maybe it's $400 to go in and rake out a washed out area, but um, it typically five, six, seven years in, we haven't seen. We have a neighborhood we've completed, and I don't think anyone's touched that trail in six, seven years. So just small little adjustments here and there. And the, the west side of the site, other side of the lake, not subject to the site plan, nothing's approved there yet. The only thing you see is that trail. So that's undisturbed and not subject to this project at all. Correct. So that's just representing the possibility of a trail? No. no. Oh, okay, so that would be. Yeah, that is. That, that portion, it's the, um, the line kind of runs just west of the, mm -hmm. the pond is the, the 12 acre portion. Well, we'll make a um, checklist that goes through the specific requirements of the town ordinance. Um, 
and complete our staff review of that in time for the next meeting, as well as that agency correspondence that we mentioned. We only receive these documents on Thursday, so I haven't, haven't been able to go through the town ordinance in detail and everywhere that we specify something is required to go and find it on this plan. So I'll bring that with a more thorough staff report next month with the evaluation of whether this meets our ordinance. And I'll front load that work as close into the month here as we can so that if we find something missing, we can point that out and we can turn around a response to it because your, your hope is to have a uh, substantially complete um, preliminary plan for the September meeting. If we need to bump it to October um, because anything's missing, we, we can. But um, if possible, we get this done preliminarily approved for this month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't want a full size. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They're really pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, next is the new text amendment for the claims use development discussion and action or inaction. I have to say that the, I, I do feel like, you know, we've, we've said ourselves that we think maybe this um, could wait until we update the um, comp plan. Mm -hmm. so I'm kind of feeling that that's the way that I would like to go with this. All right, not the same thing. Yeah. And also that we need to get on updating the plan yeah, or the comp to plan. Make an action plan for that. Yeah. So let me ask you that. When does the next one do that? State, state law says five years. Um, the attorney general doesn't go after anyone for being late. Um, Charlottesville and Avamar are both quite late on this. <laughs> we, could, we could start now. And if it were finish in the next 12 to 15 months, that would be fine. Um, it's a big update. We've got a census. We have construction in the offing that was fairly anticipated five years ago. Um, a lot has happened. So I think it will be more than just a routine. The easiest of comp plans, you grab some new demographic numbers and you don't really change anything else. Um, I think this one's going to be harder than that. Uh, there are some good, important questions about the direction of the town in the future. And that, um, last time, oh, sorry. last time the uh, comp plan was updated, what was the process by which we went about it? What was our organizational plan? What were our action steps? Like how do you start? How do you get to the I, just I didn't see the beginning of that process. Well, we, uh, we, we did a lot, uh, we had a lot of meetings, and we also did a, did a review of the, uh, of the current plan and uh, see where we didn't update. We didn't update a lot. I know Matt wanted to change a lot of went back after each made his changes and decided which ones we wanted to change and which ones we didn't. But, Basically, it's a meeting that we just uh, went, went page by page, basically. Um, I think a lot of it, you know, is intact. It's probably what needed for that. I mentioned the things that have changed the small air plan, the bank of the area to the plan, and uh, you know, anything that's uh, if there's any witnesses that have to change. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, I was in two, involved in two of them, and the, the, the first one is. Very little change. Um, I think one of the things I think we can look at is uh, you know, if, if the visions are remaining like it is, because that, that was a concern with the, with the Bird Street, you know, about maintaining the small, small area. And there's, I think, be some growing with that. So when you are talking about like how you guys went through the plan, yeah. point by point, 
uh, found what the section by section were those um, like special meetings that we called extraneous to the yes, yes, what we're doing right now? Okay. Special. So we, we spent this, a lot of them just regular meetings, it was a spare time for um, okay. all the people still in the group. Broke it up into sections. We didn't do the whole thing at once. Right. But, you know, it might be like pages one to 15 okay. for one meeting and the next one. One of the things I, I will just say this, maybe uh, having the benefit of quoting Mayor Grove, he was both a fan of them and very anti them because they're only as good as the paper they're written on. In other words, they, they're meaningless to some level because you can have a plan that needs to change with your pleasure. And, and so this is Mayor Grove, brilliant real estate attorney from uh, he didn't think they were worth too much. And so I only say that to say, we do want to do a good job when we do the comprehensive plan. But we also need to realize that we have to be responsive as a town and we need not be locked in reasoning of the past, so to speak. So as we look at new factors or as we think about how do we plan for the pub, how do we plan for the factory, how do we plan for Blenheim, we need to be creative in terms of how we do that. This is an example of the town thinking creatively. And as we think about the comprehensive plan for the future, we don't have to be locked into the past. We need to think about the future. And, and as we think about the future, I think it's some good ideas. We mentioned out here is we want to think about what have other localities done when it makes sense? What can we learn from their mistakes? What can we learn from their successes? What can we leverage in terms of what we have experienced in terms of our staff input from the community? What resources, other books can we look at? How do we evolve and engage the community? I think you can never unengage the community. I mean, you can never over-engage the community, so to speak. You can always get input, and getting input is helpful. At the same time, good public policy is the goal. You know, that's what we what we want. We want good public policy as a town, and as we make good public policy, it will be good for not just now, but long term, so to speak. So I think I think it's a good idea. I think it's good that we wrap this into that. And on the other hand, that getting at it is probably a good idea. You know, in other words, getting at the project itself. Yes, but I, I think we we have a pretty good gut sense of what the like project priorities are. So this this group had talked before about slimming this 80 page comp plan down a little bit. It probably could focus and that would make it easier to use that I don't think it would take that much retreat time with town council to identify half a dozen important projects that we think are going to keep us busy in the next five years and structure the plan around those because we know that's what's going to get the most attention. And so how are we going to take those things on and try to try to anticipate some of these decisions. On the other hand, I'm, I'm not surprised that we're four years here after our plan adoption and feeling a little bit tenuous in our connection to this thing that times have changed. We didn't know when we adopted this, the world that we were being in now. And you always kind of get to that point where your plan is too old and needs to be fresh. Um, can I ask this word? Just oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I would really encourage right now, Alvarado is going through their comprehensive plan process and they have a really great website, AC44, I think it's called. Um, it includes the surveys, the um, uh, public meetings that they're holding, uh, and public forums to get community input. It's uh, just recently sent out an update, and they send out email blasts with what's going on. Um, and one of them included all the results from the surveys, things that people are writing, and some of it really could pertain to special because there's a whole discussion of um, creating villages and rural crossroad development and how they can expand um, public. Uh, benefits to the more outlying areas. So I would encourage while you're kind of discussing how the plan, and that's a really great resource currently going on now. AC 44? I think it's AC 44. Um, but you can get to it off the Rock County website pretty easily. It's been about 30 years since the town and county update cycles lined up as well as they are now. <laughs> I think we have a really good opportunity to piggyback on some of their work that people around Scottsville are already participating in surveys and focus groups. The county planners are already running around here looking at population density and um, housing needs and road needs. And, and so I, I think we have an opportunity to 
save a lot of money on planners by using the four planner experts that they have doing their project. They're already a year into their work. Um, Admiral's comp plan process is going to cost them about a million dollars. Um, I think we should take advantage of it. Well, how, how can we mine the data that's most relevant to us? How could we do that? Because there's great diversity in Almoral County. Maybe start working more closely with their commissioners that that um, their their Scottsville district planning commissioner is accountable to us as county voters, and their um, Sam Miller district planning commission member works in town with her office. Um, I've met a few times with their staff planners, but maybe maybe us watching some of their meetings or meeting up. Um, in small groups with them and learning from them, they're ahead of us on this, and, and uh, we could maybe get, get on the details. Would they be interested in that, and maybe sending a representative to chat with us? I, I, I think um, I think Mr. Missile, the Scottsdale rep, would would consider that good representation, and I think Miss Firehawk, working on Valley Street, is not hard to get hold of. Um, we did not win the. Uh, Planning grant that I was hoping for um, applying back at the end of the spring. I heard about that a couple weeks ago. That was a $60,000 application to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, trying to do some community planning based on public health. Um, I think what we what we're describing here uh, as a comp plan is still sort of business as usual, and they didn't think it was innovative enough. I actually got to work on that innovation. Um, how things are going? I forwarded you all the latest blast that came out today for week 44 so that through to the planning commission. Thank you. So, as far as the motion for the PUD, can we just make a motion to? Discussion about yeah. You know, I mean, I feel like we've spent so much time on it and we've gotten so much good feedback. I hate to just put this on a shelf somewhere and forget everything we've heard and talked about. I mean, can we can we knock away at it a little bit more and, and then table it? Or I mean I I I think the sense if I if I say this correctly, can we Matt transfer this over and start on competence? I hear that. Um, I, I hear the feedback around more specificity and not wanting this to be a Pandora's box, but that um, the exercise of goal statements around PUD is the same exercise of vision setting in a comp plan. And you should trust that they do the same thing. And when you when you adopt, if you adopt them together, um, that they match each other. So if we, uh, sorry. if we know that this is going to be a tool used in our compline implementation, it doesn't disappear. It just kind of lingers as an appendix and we can you know, save it until we're sure that it's right. Well, let me, let me say it another way. And this is more a question to the two other planning commissioners that are here and other on the line. Could we, taking what you just said, continue the effort, but it's under the effort of the, of the Plan itself. Right, like this is subordinate to. Let's move this in. In other words, let's continue to work on this, but let's do it as a part of the comprehensive plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like get a month I, or three into the comprehensive plan, take what we learned from doing that, revisit this, ask questions, and then iterate that process maybe another time. Right. I think that would, yeah. I just don't want to, you know. I just don't want to push this through without knowing what the larger updated goals are. Absolutely. I think that I think that makes sense. So I, I think I don't think we can do that together because that's also a question, but well, that's a question for the council too. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that I think we should maybe we would say to the planning commission, hey town council, we're in the middle of looking at this PUD. There's so many changes recently. Good questions from the public. Let's start the 
let's start the comprehensive plan and let's do it, but let's get your input so that it goes both directions. Does that make sense, Matt? I think so. But um, in, and in a, in a plan update, we identify here are the here are the goals for preservation, the things we don't want to touch. Here's where we think we do have opportunity, and here are some tools that we're going to use to make that happen. Yeah, I think part of my, um, I don't want to say heartburn with this is, is that I feel like, you know, we've been talking about starting the comp plan for almost a year now, like starting the updates. And then all of a sudden we were switching gears and working on this. And I don't know if it was because we had a developer buy the property and now we're trying to, you know, create a document that will shape what plans we get for that property. So I feel like we, we switched gears and we're trying to push this forward now when, you know, I, I think it makes more sense to go back to the comp plan and start there. And I think that this would benefit from that in tandem. Right. I will, I will say one of the things, I, I, maybe it's my own personnel, but there is a herky jerkiness to, to help the files that they Right. There's a sense where sometimes the cart is driving the horse and sometimes the horse is driving the cart. <laughs> but in that process, ultimately, I think I, I sense the reservation and you're just wanting to move forward. Let's just make the public policy, you know, make the public policy. I think you would bring it all together, probably under the continent. And and so we, we can move it into that. Matt, what are the other steps that we would take if we say, okay, we want to officially start the council plan for the um, town council buy-in, um, trying to set a little bit of a schedule, and then resourcing it. Um, this plan didn't cost the town anything extra. We got some map update help from our planning district commission office, and they kept the data work that they did very limited so that it wouldn't be it would be within the realm of doing us a favor and not a supplemental contract am i right in saying this though with, with the county the way they are right now would it not behoove us to kind of get in sync with them yes and you can move faster than them because we're smaller um um can i get can i give you the floor briefly for a sales pitch when when communities outsource their comp plans what what's it look like? It can get it can get very expensive. Why? Because well, it probably back up. A lot of it is based on the direction of the planning commission and town council. If our, our planning commission, if for example, we had a very um, worded document. Everything was just words and graphs and figures and population. And our planning commission said, no, we don't want to see all that. We want to see all of that in the appendix. We want the comp plan to be a pictorial of what, what is the town, what was the town, where we want to go, specific enough to what housing types we like, what neighborhoods, even streets really look like, and what they could look like in our town. And they got very pictorial with it. That's when you get into the money because basically you're designing a new comprehensive plan. Depends on how far you want to go. Sounds like you all just want to do more of just a standard update, perhaps include, include some visuals and cover some ground that currently you don't cover. That would be a more minor plan mm -hmm. update. And I'm not sure about your planning district commission. Perhaps they could help, and perhaps Alamo County could provide some assistance so that you wouldn't get into that full RFP, throw it out there, and see what you get. Mm -hmm. but it, it depends on what you're sort of looking for. So, so budget, budget setting with council, you know, what, how much um, uh, Facilitating community meetings can get expensive if you want extra people to help make those happen. And graphic design can get expensive if you want maps and animations and pictures beyond what, um, what we can do on our own. 
but your, your question is kind of how to proceed. I think a, I think a bit of a huddle with town council folks on scoping it, time frame, budget, expectations. I think that that's the talk of the mayor saying it was just for you. His experience on the planning commission, I think, his experience on a lot of things. Yeah. Would be very he was, beneficial. He was on this planning commission. Would that be an action item during a town council meeting that we would participate in as opposed to like a joint meeting? Probably. Is that probably something to, to, yeah, a, a, a joint activity to um, set some expectations because they, they'd be setting you a, a charge um, with, you know, monthly reportage back. But hey, work on, work on a draft for us. This is important for the council future. We'll, we'll see you back in a year. But before we can scope it with town council, don't we need to know what we're scoping? Like, I don't know how much to ask them for because I don't know what, how much we're planning on updating. Yeah. Well, it kind of goes both ways though, because in a sense, what we're saying is, hey, town council, this project with the PUD, we really feel like this should be part of the new overall plan. And then the town council can say, fine, okay, it's going to be part of the new overall plan. Let's let us come up with what we are, our parameters are, and come back to you and say, okay, here's what we think. And it seems like it, it would go both ways because, in a sense, this council is saying, I mean, you can think of it two ways. On, on one hand, we're saying it's incomplete, we don't have the full picture. The town council's place to get the other part of the picture. The town council's job is to get it from everybody, you know, the community. And then for it to come back to the planning commission and say, hey, planning commission, you all do it. And that's also involves the community. So is that would that be fair, Matt, to say it that way? I think so. And, and I can I can give options for commission and council of you know if you if you scope it at zero, ten thousand, and fifty thousand dollars, this is what it looks like. Um, and we can try that on for size. Could we have you, like, for instance, at between now and our next meeting, all of us take a look at the current plan, write down our notes, talk with each other at next meeting about like what we see, what we want out of it, and then you can yeah. bring with you that presentation and we can see which one matches what we discovered over that last month. Uh, and then move forward towards town council with that understanding of, okay, this is what we think we want to get done. Right. And, Here's for you guys to help us facilitate that. And I can send you a few other products as well. Like if you if you take the town's 2013 document and put it next to the 2018 document, you can see what we accomplished at no cost. Sure. And then I can give you a couple other small town examples which did involve some help. And if you want us to move more in that direction, here's what you might have to pay for because the you know animations of things looking different in town isn't something I can draw. Well, I would appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I, I like both of the idea. I just want a sense of where, before we go to town council, you know, what exactly we're asking of them. Right. That will help them. So we'll put a business item for next meeting, discuss what we brought from home about what we learned between now and next month um, about the comprehensive plan and what we want for it. So that would just be like our own extracurricular. We take a look at it at home. Maybe we should each like assign each other a specific section that we're responsible for talking about um, at this meeting. And then over the course of that meeting, when all of us have spoken about the section that we wanted to take a look at, then come to some overarching conclusions. So what we'd like to see for the plan in the future, what we like about it, what we don't like about it. Yes, we're pretty close to that. Um, like things that we believe could use more clarification, things that we believe are just simply updated and need to be rewritten to better suit what we're working on now with the economic and environmental conditions, as well as developmental conditions that we're looking at. Um, so just get a bare bones idea, a ballpark idea. This looks good, this needs attention, this needs desperate attention and then go from there, just so that we get a better idea of what our own sense of scope is. Yeah, yeah. Come on, okay. How many pages did we say our current one is? 80. 
3D. And with pictures and maps, um, it's not. I want that. It's not. A, it's not a, um, and I, when I laid this out, I did put in more of a publicity type photos like this. This was fun. What is eighty pages? Oh, the current outline. Mine says sixty-eight. Maybe you don't have the picture. <laughs> I mean, I'm going off of what I was given in my packet in the past, the orientation packet. Okay, so Paul, if you can just resend it. I mean, I, I don't know. I know I have it saved on my hard drive too. I don't know if it's the same as this or that. Well, this one does say 2018 wrapped. So maybe that's the problem. Last revised 2018. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's so, the difference. That one is a little bit more finalized. So, is there any kind of motion that we have to make to codify what we were just talking about? I've got plenty. I've got plenty of instructions. Okay. okay. Um, do we want to split it into like fifteen-page sections, or? I mean, I think it probably makes that. a little more sense to pick out what chapters speak to each of us individually more than another. I don't disagree with that. Can we? Do we need any sort of formal motion on the HUD? Yep. I did want while while we have. Um, Ms. Brown here, could we get your idea, thoughts and ideas here, what you think of what we have so far and, you know, where it might be lacking, um, if you think it's lacking anything? I'd be happy to look at it. Uh, I haven't, I haven't okay. spent a lot of time with it. Gotcha. Okay. I, I spoke with Drew on budgeting. A while back to help me with that graphic location. So it, it won't be the first time he's heard of it. So, with the PUD, is our motion to table for later discussion? If, if, you, if you'd like to pass it by or table it, that, that will serve to um, have it not be up at old business. So, if anybody are concerned about it being adopted in the middle of the night, they could let that concern today. I mean, we could work on it concurrently. We right. could keep working on on it. I just didn't want to vote on it tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so if we don't make a motion at all, it just remains old business and carries over for each agenda until it's resolved. I, I might, since they are together, I mean, if the, the sense, sense of the body is that these, these sit together, um, I can, Comprehensive plan update will be the old business item. Okay. And PUD is a implementation tool okay. in that. And I think that's, that's just fine. And uh, there won't be any surprise community applications on it. Okay. Well, I just want to say <laughs> that I, I don't know. I just feel like you sent us all the research that we can, first of all, We've had several mm -hmm. meetings talk about how we're going to move forward on this and or how what changes we're going to make to it. And now we're not moving forward on it, or we are, but we're. I just I just want to make sure it's in alignment with the comp that updated comp plan. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't think I mean, what you're talking about has been wasted effort with that in mind. Well, it's going to be wasted because we're not going to remember these conversations in two years. We're not going to remember the feedback that we got, the emails that we. I'm got. not suggesting that we wait that long. No, absolutely not. I just want to just make sure it's... how furthering the comp plan is going to get us any further on this because the comp plan's two a year and a half away, mm -hmm. but also this this isn't like. It doesn't supersede the comp plan and it doesn't take away from the comp plan, it, you know, as Matt said, goes mm -hmm. with. And, you know, the only thing that we, you know, that is unique to this is these goals, but they come from the comp plan. 
and they come from all the research that you put together for us. I mean, all those PDFs and the Word documents and the minutes and surveys, I mean, all of that backed this up. I thought that was beautiful that you had it all together in one email. I, I appreciated that, by the way. Um, I don't know. It, it just seems like it kind of was everything you wanted, but um, I don't know. So I just want to be on the record saying, I don't know, just a little bit confused and perhaps a little frustrated. Well, maybe, maybe they just really say it this way at the end. So you have the information you need. So you're ready to move forward. They're still trying to get the pieces, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I, all I would say would be in that process, I think if we allow them a little more time, in other words, moving it into the comp plan, you're ready to go. I think there's been some legitimate comments mentioned here today. And as we mm -hmm. roll it into the comp plan, Matt, this could be voted. Can it be voted on separately also? I mean, it, it, as a piece of the kind, even if it was, it doesn't have to be all together. It, it, yeah. had, it's, it had its public hearing. And I have, you're, you're right, I have put a lot of work into it over the past two years and have twice recommended it as being ready for vote. Um, Ms. Brown and I were talking about it on Thursday, and she described this like, like any bit of law as being iterative. You, you don't draft it exactly right the first time. And if you use it and realize that it has a shortcoming, you do another text amendment. Um, and that's not that's not the end of the world. It's a um, all of this text is work in progress. Um, so I mean you can you can act on it whenever you're comfortable and whenever it has to support. Um, I, I respect those reservations, but I, I also hear what you say about the work that's gone into it. If you, if you think it's ready. Um, well, if we go, ahead, did go back to Matt, to Matt to just say this again. If we review with the town council the priorities that we have, in other words, we let's just say we affirm this is a priority, but it's, I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. assuming I'm one town council, but we, we talk about the idea that this is a priority to the town, we want to address this. This is going to be this. This is really important because it's a it's a vacant factory or it's a piece of land of the plan that we want to address. As we look at this process, the next process is we want to make sure does this fit into how you see where the comp plan is going. There's several planning commissioners who want to make sure this fits into that plan and or doesn't. And if it does then we want to move forward with this. Is that fair to say that right? I, I think, but I would like to say, I'm not suggesting that we roll it into the comp plan mm -hmm. and that we wait two years to vote on this. I just wanted to get a little more clarity around, I would like more public engagement on this sure. before we vote on it. Um, and I think that we can do that in conjunction with the updates to the comp plan. That is all I'm suggesting. I'm not suggesting that we wait two years. That's why I suggested that one to three month kind of iterative period where, so we go, we spend this next month looking over the comp plan, deciding what needs to be done, what we think needs to be done. And then once we have a finer grasp, like a much more microscopic grasp of the comprehensive plan and what we want out of it, then that will better inform our decision on this in another two, maybe three months. Well, what I hear you saying about the comp plan is more of like a, a structural, like, do we like the way it's designed? Do we like these topics? Do we want these topics? Do we want other topics? What, because we, we can't make the decisions about the nitty gritty. That's for the focus groups and for down the road. You're right. Um, I'm also speaking more specifically to the idea of so identifying portions where we think, okay, we have gotten some new feedback on this particular topic recently. So let's revisit that with more clarity and more um, volition. Um, so I'm talking about both structure, but more, more about the content. Um, so when we're looking over it, we can better identify. These are things that we've been talking about for a little while that could be clarified. These are things that are totally good to go. Um, and so just generally getting an idea of the framework that we're trying to fit the PUD into 
and then uh, to better identify in a more holistic sense mm -hmm. what feedback we're really looking for in order to get that done. Is there other planning commissioner still on? Yes. Yeah, I wonder if she had a thought or a comment she wants. Yeah, I have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this a metaphor for like a bureaucracy or something? I mean, the whole thing just seems to be a hurry up and wait kind of situation. I feel like I've been in meetings in the past where I've really tried to push, you know, like, let's do it. Let's sit down and do this and that. And um, I just don't think we're, I think we're stuck because I don't think we have the, um, you know, the experience to kind of look at this as something we know how to attack. Um, my, my solution to that at this point in time is to um, have each of us review the comp plan and set up a working session and sit down at the table and go through the comprehensive plan, um, you know, section by section and just kind of discuss what it does for our vision of the town. And just start throwing out ideas and things we like and things we don't like, and then start assigning sections and tackling it that way. I just, I really would like to see us get some movement. Um, that is my opinion. That is what I'd like to do. I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry, I said, said that. Like, <laughs> I just would like to see us what? I'd like to. Okay, get moving. Um, I am looking for us to get moving. I'm I'm not trying to be cute, but I I I'd have to say that I'm a little frustrated. I think we we've been talking about how to move forward for a while. So, um, how do you feel about? a plan where we get together and we go through the comprehensive plan one by one. We've maybe all reviewed it ourselves, but what does it mean to all of us? Um, that's what I propose. Um, but I'm feeling really cranky right now, so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. <laughs> so we schedule a special session before our next meeting and that would be where we have a group discussion specifically like that whole meeting is about the comp plan we have our discussion about it and then we move forward um, at the next official meeting uh, with that in mind does that sound close to what you're talking about Molly? yes absolutely and i think you know i've been hesitant about our working sessions because they're basically just like any other meeting, but if we commit to each other to jump in and, you know, make some decisions and make some movement in, in what is going to culminate in a new comp plan, um, that's what I'd like to see. If a, if a productive setting on that is to have it, you know, um, spread out over some some snacks with drafts and highlighters and pencils and make it less formal and we just you know tear the thing yes that, that can sometimes be fun yes i think we should all wear hats but <laughs> but whatever it is that takes us out of this rut um that's what i'm hoping that we can do i i you know, I love each and one of you all and, and respect each of your ideas. We're just not coming together on really hashing this out. So let's do it. What Thank do you say? You, you said it better than I did. Thank you. So is there a motion to schedule a special session? I don't have a vote, but I would vote for it if it was focused and, and we really like rolled up our sleeves so everyone comes in doing their homework, mm -hmm. right? That's that's what I definitely want yeah. out of this. And I want that to be like the only topic yeah. at the special Can session. We do that? So Can we do that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, if you want to do the change of venue, it still has to be open to the public. Anybody can see us snacking. But um, I, I, do, I do recommend that not being in the furniture that you're in right now. Yeah, Go I think like working around a table, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so come down off the podium, people. Yep. Make it a public, make the public great. Yeah. 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 Ye
Ooh, I dig that. Well, <laughs> okay. So we need a do we need a motion for that, or do we just go ahead and can we just schedule that? We can figure out the dates later. Um, special meeting can be at your call if you want. I just need at least three days of advance notice for it. If you know your dates, so it'd be great to call now. That's two. I think we should have at least two weeks to review the comp plan on our own to come up with ideas and talking points um, and then hash it out at the meeting and come up with a plan to move forward. I'm just saying. Does it need to be in the evenings for everybody? I can be a little flexible. I'm flexible. I mean, I could do a weekend, but I, I if it's during the week, I'm not super flexible. Okay. Okay. I think I would set something outside of me. I'm kind of a health situation at the moment. So set a set meeting out of living in other than Um, I can be flexible given the my schedule that work doesn't come out for basically a week at a time. Um, do we want to do it on a weekday or are we okay doing something less kind of formal on a weekend? That's what I mean, that's I'm, I'm free like anytime after 530. I don't know if time like is starting a little early in my time. I mean, why not? Why not a Sunday afternoon or something like that? Would that work? Lisa was just saying she'd prefer a weekday. Oh, I'm so sorry. Would we want to make it consistent by doing like Monday the twenty second? Sounds. Is that after? That's fine. That's the fourth one. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Let's do it. Woo! <laughs> Plan six to eight. Yeah. Is six okay for everyone? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And can I just okay. ask a question about? The pot. So I, I was hearing Bill say that um, it should be prescriptive of the things that we want to see. I, I wasn't under the impression that the PUD would lay out the types of businesses and things. Does, does it need to do that? Or is do we just lay out the The, the items that we've identified as priorities in 14.1, and then the developer would come to us with, hey, we looked at these and we want to put a, we want to put a brewery in there and we want to have, we want to make it like the X Park where you have art and you have, you know, pub, the public can come together and there's large open space. And you're, you're, you're right. Um, there's a separate set of economic development sort of marketing work that I do to try to recruit a doctor's office. Um, I'm trying to recruit doctor's offices and not trying to recruit facilities. Um, but we don't need to get to the level of detail in our zoning okay. to say, you know, medical is strictly preferred over distilleries. Okay. If, if a distillery shows up with a PUD application and we think it's a bad idea, we reject it. Okay. Um, I wrote the word civic down from Mr. Eisen's comments. I think adding civic in D is a good idea to okay. say that we, we can think of civic uses and we should try to get those done in the mixed use. Okay. Um, right along right. with just commercial. It's not all right. Because I thought it would be a mix of based on what you had presented yeah. to us earlier, mm -hmm. you know, in earlier sessions. I thought it would be a mix of businesses apartments, mm -hmm. um, condos, that kind yep. of thing. And then also perhaps a doctor's office. I would love to see that too. Um, and, and you might well see, I mean, 
someone builds a shopping center, they do it with no tenants listed at all, except maybe the anchors. And they'll say, you know, here's 10 commercial spaces. I don't know if you're going to get a doctor or a brewery. I just build shell space. And then they wouldn't come in. Okay. Well, and the, I believe the comp plan mentions some priorities that businesses would like to see, and that did come up in the focus groups, and access to medical care was one of the the desired, you know, partners or um, businesses, but. Right, I just was wondering if we needed to put it in here, but so I wanted to clarify that. And can you also talk to what Mr. Holt was saying about what was found at the tire factory? Did I miss something yeah, you. about, that? about that? Yeah, there, the um, water scheme was that we can't build over a certain height. Yeah, there is there is um, groundwater not very far below there, getting on closer to the river. Um, and so the I think the model that's there on top of the piano represents pretty well. We can't go three stories tall. Okay. You wouldn't want to dig a footer for an elevator shaft and try to put that in there. Renovating within the space that exists already, you've got 15, 15 foot clear, 20 foot total ceilings. You can do a lot with 15, 20 foot ceilings. Okay. Um, I don't think it um, kills the renovation idea to say that you can't build up to three and four stories. Okay. Um, but, you're, but you're right, there's, there's groundwater not far below. And I, I would, I've seen big pits excavated for heavy duty footers on taller buildings and wouldn't want to take that there. Okay. And where did that information get disseminated? Um, it's in the face to right now. Right, but where, like where did was that to town council? Mm. Did we? No, I sent that to council. Did you get those? I don't I, I did don't remember that. I got you. I know I, I described the um, chemical findings at our at our report, but it, the groundwater is, is, is a good is a good unfair. That's in that too. Okay. Thank you. Um, Do I get to make a motion now? Um, would you like to make the motion for the special session? Because I don't think we've done that yet. Are you saying we need a motion or we don't need a motion? We do need a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that, oh, did we come up with a date? Yes. August 22nd, 6 p.m. August 22nd. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we put together a special working session for the Planning Commission on August 22nd at 6 p.m. Second. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Any further business? Do we have any further business? Can I make another motion? <laughs> <laughs> Please do, Mother. Go ahead. Hello, I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> that we adjourn this meeting this evening at 8.56 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. I can't wait to work with you guys. See y'all. I don't know that. Oh, you're working. We appreciate your